Today we're going to compare the Sigma 35mm f2 DGDN and the Sony 35mm f1.4 G Master. We're going to go over build, sharpness, bokeh and more. Use the chapters for your convenience. There's two thirds of a stop difference in light level between these two lenses. However, f2 might be good enough for you. Well, that's why you're here to find out which is best for you. Like finding the right partner through Craigslist. Let's get started with the build and handling comparison. Let's go over the similarities. Both at the bottom have a weather sealing gasket right here. They both have this aperture ring right here. They have an autofocus manual focus switch right here. Their manual focus wheels, I mean, they're different styles. The Sony is obviously bigger, easier to grip because of the rubber. However, the Sigma is just fine and the resistance is actually a little bit better on the Sigma. It's really buttery in, in feel. And they both have a 0.27 meter close focusing. The Sony has a 67 millimeter filter thread. Sigma, I believe this is 58 millimeters. Now we'll go over the advantages. The Sony aperture wheel is click and clickless. So if you turn this off, it goes through smoothly. If you turn it on and it clicks. Sigma is only click. The Sony has weather sealing inside of the lens. Sigma does not, it only has this gasket. The Sony has a button right here, programmable for focus hold. Sigma does not. When it comes to their hood, both have a very different style of hood. The Sony one is really fantastic in that it's flat so you can lay it down standing which can come handy and it also has a lock so it's, it's very sturdy the sigma does not have either one but it is flat so you can also stand this one stands no problem and this is steel so it is really an amazing piece of hood if you're into using hoods. The Sony is much more flexible, has a good amount more features. However, the advantage is going to be small because of the very different approaches. Next up is autofocus. The GM is expected to do better. However, how much better? Let's find out. Both cameras are set to responsive. Pay attention to how fast the rack performs. As you can see, I'll label them now. The Sony is just so much faster in snapping into focus. It's like my wife when it comes to her Facebook notifications. When it comes to continuous tracking, both lenses perform well with quick movements. Focus is quite sticky. It follows closely and it never lets go like a motivated stalker. Wow. When it comes to the lowest of light levels, the GM is a winner by a small margin. The Sigma lags just a bit. However, it catches up it's not really a big problem. Overall winner in the autofocus category has to go to the G Master. Next up is sharpness. It's gonna be extensive. I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm not your wife. Ooh. Starting at the center, the Sigma is at F2. The Sony G Master is at F1.4. And right off the bat, the Sigma is a tiny bit softer than the G Master. Moving to the mid frame, the G Master is a bit better as you can see in the fencing and the lettering is just a little bit more crispy. Moving to the edge, if we're going to compare the leaves and trees, both are a little bit soft. As you can see, the lettering is pretty decent. Moving to the far corners, I would say the G Master has an advantage here. As you can see, this leaf detail is just a little bit more clean as well as the fencing material right here and here. Now we have both lenses at F2. The Sony G Master is clearly sharper as you can see right here. Let's go back to the mid frame. Now the details are much clearer when it comes to the trees and the text is also clear. Moving back to mid frame, the difference is not as much. There is a small improvement with the G Master. Center sharpness, there is a little bit more bite when it comes to the Sony. It's a very small amount and I believe the Sigma will improve 
one stop down. At f2.8, both are neck and neck. Really can't tell much difference between the two. Moving to mid frame, the Sigma still lags just a bit. As you can see, this is just a little bit softening compared to the crispy lettering of the Sony, as well as this fencing material and the tree right here. Just a little bit more crispy on the Sony. Moving to the edge. And the Sigma did improve a good bit. However, it still lags behind the Sony. Moving to the far corners. And yes, the Sony looks like there's artificial sharpening. It is just so blistering sharp. At F4, the Sigma cleans up quite a bit. However, still lags behind the Sony. And the edges, it still lags behind the Sony by a noticeable amount. Moving mid frame. The Sigma is still lagging by just a little bit. Hasn't caught up yet. Back to the center and they are neck and neck. At F5.6, they are very similar. At this point, you could say that the sharpness is neck and neck. I, I say the Sony is still a tiny bit better. As you can see, the tree de details just a bit more. At the edge, the Sigma has a little bit of a softness to it compared to the Sony. I mean, this G Master is just ridiculous. At the far corners, same story. The Sigma lags just by a tiny little bit. At F8, more of the same story. The Sigma never really catches up to the Sony G Master. Back to the edges and more of the same story. The Sony G Master is just a little bit clearer. At the mid frame, the Sigma did increase the sharpness. However, you know, Sony isn't going to sit still and it does appear a tad bit sharper. And back to the center at F8 and they look very comparable. Winner in this category is the Sony G Master. Now let's look at Bokeh. Well, this lens doesn't have much because it's F4. However, these other two, the Sigma and the Sony should have a lot more. Let's have a look. Here's the full view. Can you tell which is which? In my opinion, both lenses act pretty well. Here's a close up. And there is nothing really concerning about the Bokeh in either one of the lenses. Of course, the G Master is going to be more blurry, bigger blobs, and it's simply a little bit cleaner. When looking the edges and looking for the problems, the Sigma has a slight distraction. You'd have to put the images side by side to even notice it. Otherwise, I think most people would just gloss right over it. Here is the full body 35 millimeter blurring abilities. One is F2, one is F1.4. Can you tell the difference? Well, there's only so much you can do at wide angle and at this certain shooting distance. The separation is good. The working distance is nice and dynamic. However, you are limited to the amount of blurring ability and the GM does stand out in this instance. Winner in this category is the G Master. Next up is the Chromatic Aberration and Longitudinal Aberration, otherwise known as Bokeh CA. Let's have a look. Both lenses are wide open. The Sigma is at f2. The Sony is at f1.4. Let's have a look. Here's the center and there's not much going on right here. Going towards the top. As you can see, both lenses remain quite clean. There may be a hint more for the Sony. It's just a small hint at this point. And we'll go towards the far corners. This is worst case scenario. And you can see that there is a thin layer of purple fringing on both of them. It's so thin and minor. I can't see this being an issue. All right, this is the full image. We're gonna get close. You have to zoom in 100% to see this loca. I mean, it's fairly low. You can see the outline on the Sigma and the Sony. And here's the purpling on the Sony and the remaining screen on the Sigma. They're, they're about on par. I, I can't really say it's worse just because it shows up in this area and doesn't here. It, it's a little bit heavier on this right here. For the Sony, it's fairly low and controlled. I wouldn't worry about it. I would consider this CA and Loca a draw. Flare and sun stars, how do these lenses perform with direct light into the lens? Let's have a look. Looking at the one on the right, you can see that there is a small blob that shows up. This is one of the most extreme scenarios you can have pointing straight at the sun. The one on the left is quite clean. 
I can say with confidence that both lenses are highly flare resistant in practice. I am just illustrating how it behaves in the most extreme scenario. What do you guys think? Both lenses are wide open. The Sony is at 1.4, the Sigma is at f2, and the Sony performs better in this scenario. Here we are looking at the Sun Stars. Can you tell which is which? I'll give you a hint. The Sony has 11 blade aperture. Sigma has nine. Here's the reveal. And to my eyes, the Sony looks better. The Sun Stars are sharper. There's less uh, feathering when it comes to the Sun Stars and it's just really clean. Both lenses do flare quite a bit. One stopped down to F16. I do like the look of the Sony here. The rays are nice and thin, like a rice-fed Asian. Wow. Winner in this category is the Sony G Master. Next up is focus breathing, and that's what happens when the frame contracts and expands when you're moving focus. Let's have a look. I'll put up a red line so you can see what's going on right here. As you can see, both lenses do breathe heavily. There's a good amount of contraction and expansion, like a mother giving birth to twins. <coughs> so for video, you would think that these lenses aren't very good with this type of movement. However, Sony has a trick in the bag, and that's focus breathing compensation. You can see this right now. Not every camera has this feature. However, I do think it will be moving on to future iterations. So I do want to include it into this comparison because it'll be relevant years on later. Winner in this category is the Sony G Master. Time to formally address the size and we'll go over some technical details. All right, so the Sigma comes in at 309 grams. The Sony G Master comes in at 509 grams. So a difference of 200 grams. I mean, it does not look like it. Well, yes, it sort of does look like it. It does weigh 200 grams more. And this 67 millimeter front filter thread, it means that this thing does feel a little bit more bulky. And the Sigma feels a lot lighter because of it's so much thinner. That said, having a 1.4 35 millimeter in the 500 range is something new. I mean, we haven't had anything this small in terms of the DSLR days. So this is a welcome change. It is quite a bit smaller. When it comes to the size, you know, an inch is an inch. Us Asians know about that and it matters. Aww. So if you're trying to get the smallest one and save on size, this one is truly travel friendly. While this one is borderline big, but if you're only carrying this one, it's not too bad. Let's go over value. The Sigma comes in at 639. The Sony comes in at 1399. That's over twice the price. Yeah, that is a lot of money. However, with the Sony, you're somewhat more future proof. As you can see in the focus breathing test, yes, there is a new feature in the lens compensation for focus breathing. So that's what you get. Also, you get 30 frames per second with the A1. And if there's a newer, faster camera, you probably get that as well. So while those features are nice, it is still double the price. Winner in this category has to go to the Sigma. Final thoughts. When it comes to 35 millimeter, it may be the de facto lens for you. It is for a lot of people and they replace zooms with the 35 millimeter because it's so flexible to use. So if you're putting all your heart and energy, you might just get the Sony G Master because it offers everything you can ask for it. Minus the size, there's not much you can do about it. It is a f1.4 lens. The Sigma is definitely a high level lens and it might be the one for you. The mechanical operation is just pure bliss. Yes, the G Master is through the roof when it comes to optics. However, the Sigma is quite good in its own right. The size, price, and optics are undeniably high level on the Sigma. However, if you're looking for the extra bite, that extra blur, and willing to make sacrifices, the GM is in a different league. It's a phenomenal lens. And by the way, I didn't even mention color. Right, the GM has a very pure color rendition and it's very Zeiss-like. It could be that Sony 
borrowed their colors the way I borrow movies online. So which would I choose? And that is kind of difficult to say. I already have the 24 G Master and that is one of my primary lenses. However, that's because my kids are so young and I have to be physically close. I do want to graduate to 35 millimeters once they grow up and I have more freedom. So I would probably get the G Master for its future proofing. Right now I'm using the A7 Mark IV and having this extra ability for the focus breathing compensation, who knows what else is down the pipeline. So that's why I would lean towards 35. It's more of my natural shooting distance. However, now I just use 24 because I just got really accustomed to it. Anyhow, I'm blabbing too much. Like, sub, share. See you on the next one.